Now we're getting serious for science. Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the king of armor destruction, and you guess it, we've got an armor test today. This one's been a long time coming. We've got an Hesco L210 Special Rifle Threat Plate. The L210 is a very, very thin plate. It measures 620 thousandths thick, and it weighs five pounds, eight ounces, at least on the average of the three plates that I have here for testing. Essentially, this plate is rated to stop 762 by 39 BZ API, which is a very rare and uncommon round in the US. But we're gonna see how well this plate stacks up to 556 five, threats. And even though that it is not rated for 308s, this is actually not a level three plate. The NIJ level three specs that you have to take six shots of 308. We're gonna try putting maybe a backer behind this or something and seeing how it will handle our 308 threats. While my tests are not as controlled as the NIJ, I try to keep to quite a few constants as possible so that you can take some information away from this or if you are the manufacturer of this, you can see what kind of performance that I'm getting from my tests and possibly pay for an NIJ test. So I shoot at 45 feet, which is what rifle plates are shot at. I also shoot at zero degrees. That is the worst possible scenario for the armor. So that if it stops it at 45 feet and at zero degrees, any oblique shots at those weird angles or increased distance only increases your chance. We also use a giant clay briefcase here. This is a brand new one that I actually built. It is four inches thick, 16 and a half by 16 and a half. And we actually had Chavant, if I'm saying that wrong, please correct me in the comments below. They donated the Roma number one plast plastilina clay that we're gonna use here. Now, it is very temperature sensitive. It's gotta be, I think, 95 to 100 degrees to actually get the certification for the drop test. So I just like to use it as a compressible media. This thing weighs about 70 pounds, so it's good to throw the body armor on. It's about 60 degrees and overcast today. At the beginning of our videos, I put a little pre-summary spreadsheet here so we can see everything that we're gonna shoot at it, and at the end, I fill all of that out. We also use a chronograph whenever possible. That is a Pro Chronograph DLX. Give us a moment to reposition everything, and we'll get into today's test. All right, we have our clay briefcase set up with our L210 and we're ready to take our first shots. I think I forgot to mention in the opening because this has a ceramic strike face. Per the NIJ, we've dropped all of our test subjects on their face two times from our drop test rig. These HESCO L210 plates were donated by one of my followers and a very gracious vendor who wishes to remain anonymous. If you're looking at the third camera and you see that there's already a discrepancy in the upper left of the plate, I attempted to shoot 762 by 39 the BZ API at it first, and since I only had two of those rounds, the red dot that I was using on the AK was not sighted in, and they shot way too high even after correcting. So we're gonna start with 556 threats. We have M193, it's a 55 grain full metal jacket. We have M855, which is a 62 grain uh, lead core with a steel penetrating tip. We have M855A1, which is again 62 grain. This has a copper core with a much larger hardened steel tip. Then we have SS190, it's a 5.7 bullet, 31 grains with a similar steel tip to M855, but it's only 31 grains with an aluminum core. Then we have a specialty round from Elite Ammunition. This is their T6B in 5.56. Now in reality, the second you take a hit on a plate, you should be moving out of the way. Thinking you're gonna take multiple hits is probably not too real life, but this is just for data. So we're gonna take as many shots as possible on a plate. We've spaced them out two inches if possible to remain fair. We have a 22 inch TC compass with a JK armament rifle kit on there. So we should be getting maximum velocity out of these rounds. Thirty-three, forty-three, very fast. Now the M eight five five.
Now the A1. Now the SS190 pole. Got to make sure I put this in a good spot. 3793. Woohoo! Thirty-three fifty-five. All right, we've put a lot of rounds on that plate, and if you didn't get out of the way after the first one, I don't know what's wrong with you. Let's go see what we did. The first two shots up here were the 762 by 39 BZ. I'll have to try to get some more of that. I apologize. But here was our M193. The second shot, the M855. The second shot, A1 number one, number two, are a really fast SS190 and T6B. As you can see. They are using alumina as our strike face and coming out there. We'll try to move the straps out of the way and see what we get. Place your bets in the comments below. Based on some of the online discussion, this should have handled the 556 threats without a problem. It's the 308 threats that it has a problem with. Uh oh Raggy, we have a penetration there and there. Let me actually peel this back. Yeah, there, that is a penetration from the M193. Not sure how well you can see that. I'm kind of curious if these two up here made it through. I see a mark in the clay, but I'm not entirely sure. This one was right down here, but I have used this clay for a test the day before. So I think it's only fair that we use the bottom of our plate and take a couple more shots on this before we move off to any of the 308s to make sure that we're actually getting a pass through on these. It's really hard to tell but it does look like on the A1 shot that it did penetrate. So we'll strap this back up and take two more shots. All right, since those first four shots seem a little inconclusive on our M193 and our M855A1, we have enough purchase area on this plate to take four more shots. I put a level 3A backer behind it so that if it does penetrate, we'll be able to see it in that. And then I'm gonna take a shot at the bottom of the plate where we haven't shot before. So if there's any air pockets or anything, they won't try to trick us. Now the A1. And then the second A1. All right. Let's go see if those results are any different. All right, here is M193 shot number one, number two, A1 shot number one, A1 shot number two. I'm really close to that T6B. Not sure I would consider that a fair hit. Hopefully if we have any penetrations, the 3A backer will give us a little better indication. So far I am noticing the back face on this plate with the R556 threats is basically non-existent and it looks like we do have a penetration from M193 that was the second shot at almost 3400 feet per second no penetration on the first one and it looks like both 
A1 shots squeaked through. Now the 3A backer though, this is a hybrid offering from AR500 Armor, although I put it the wrong way. Stopped both of those rounds that made it through from getting into the clay. I should have put this part forward, but I just wanted to make it as a witness. So interesting, M193 out of a 22 inch barrel at contact distance, which you probably wouldn't ever see in real life, can penetrate this plate and A1 as well. All right, I don't have any more of the 762 by 39 API stuff, but I do have M2 AP loaded into 300 blackout, which if you were to fire an M1 Grand, that velocity would get you at about almost 700 yards engagement. And I have an M80 A1, sorry, I grabbed the wrong ones, loaded into 300 blackout as well. This is right around 2,000 feet per second. Again, outside of the purview of any plate testing, lots of fantasy here, but there's always a what if. We have a 10 and a half inch 300 blackout from Palmetto State Armory. Still got the JK Armament pistol kit on here. Make sure I hit where I want to on this. This is a fresh plate, by the way. All right, we are on the plate. Here was our M2 AP 300 blackout shot, and here was our M80 A1. 300 blackout shot far enough away from any of those two shots those are considered a fair hit place your bets in the comments below oh our m80 a1 oh raggy made a penetration at 2,000 feet per second now our m2 ap did not in our prior testings, most of the RF2 plates had trouble stopping that. Now, here's an interesting part. Here is our hybrid plate that I turned around to the right side this time. Look what's right there. Let's see if I can get a little closer and you can see that. That is the copper slug from the M80A1. And it was right outside our panel there and it stopped it. There's the actual steel penetrating tip from the M80A1 as well. Interesting. I think it's a good thing we do not try to shoot our SBR M80A1 at this or any tungsten threats, but it's cool that it stopped it. I think we'll try our 308 on this now and see how this plate fares. We're into the final home stretch of our testing of the L210. I think these are the last four shots that I'm going to take. I'm going to save that other L210 plate for any other testing. If you guys have any requests, always leave a comment below. And then if I can make them happen, we'll certainly shoot them. What I have here is 308. This is M80 ball from Poonsang or PMC. It's 145 to 150 grain full metal jacket bullet. This is the actual threat for level three. It has to stop six of those on a plate. From what I've read online on the L210, it potentially can stop these, but the back face is what will fail on them. I have, again, that level 3A hybrid plate or panel behind this on one side and not so much on the other. So we're gonna try to take four shots on this plate and see if there's any difference in back face. As I drop that one on the ground. This is a 22 inch TC compass, still rocking the JK Armament rifle kit. Good velocity out of that.
shot way too low on that one. All right, let's go see what we did, folks. All right, here were our four shots. Number one, two, three, four. I don't remember which order these three were in. That's why I've got the cameras, but this is definitely number one. This side had our 3A backer on it. Kind of curious as to what happened. I do think I need a new table. My table's seen better days. And this is a brand new clay briefcase that's seen better days. Ho! Oh, got a lot going on here. Oh, raggy. There is a penetration there. There. And there that one that one's kind of a weird hit that one took a downward spiral not sure if i consider that a fair hit that one i can see a hole clean through so then the question becomes look at our clay this is brand new clay helper hand back face not too bad we'll get the measurement off that in a second this clay has to be heated to a certain temperature so i just use it as a compressible media and it doesn't necessarily represent actual back face trauma in an nij test put my poor clay down there Whew, look at that all right we have our depth gauge here let's see how far this guy goes down Right around 32 millimeters. May probably see more when this is warmer, so that probably would be failing back face. Now, the little armor panel was not over here on this shot, so that was an actual penetration into the clay. This guy over here, I'm not sure because of the way the bullet moved, but it did look like it slowed it down enough. So if you were wearing a 3A backer, you could potentially stop 308 threats with survivable back face with this, but it's cutting it pretty close. I've received a lot of positive comments about doing teardowns in these plates so that you can see exactly what's inside of these, at least, you know, from a 10,000 foot view. Here is our ceramic strike face. It extends all the way to the edge. There's some kind of glue and tape over the front of it. Here's the back. It's a pretty thick piece of alumina. We'll have to get a measurement on that. Over here is our ultra high molecular weight polyethylene or PE for short backer. A few of the layers have started to delaminate. Pretty simple construction. There was a little bit of uh, foam I see on the outside to protect the edge. There's no foam on the strike face. Well, everyone, I think that's why I'm the self-proclaimed king of armor destruction. Now, I shaped a lot of the threats for our HESCO L210 off of what I had read online or different requests that people had made in comments or DMs about the capability of this plate because this is a very popular plate. It's very lightweight and it's very thin. It's only single curve, but it, at its lightweight, it can be pretty comfortable long-term use, but there had been a lot of questions on what it can and can't do. I will say I am very surprised at the results that we got from our HESCO L210 plate, our M855A1 out of the 22 inch barrel, as well as the M193 being able to penetrate this at contact distance kind of worries me a little bit, but you don't see too many people rocking a 22 inch barrel gun taking shots at 45 feet. More realistically, you're gonna see 14 and a half inch or even 10 and a half inch SBRs or occasionally a 16 or 20 inch. As I mentioned, we still have one L210 plate left. If there are anything that you guys wanna see shot against this, always leave me a comment below. And if we get enough requests and we have time, we can definitely make that happen with this plate. Well, folks, I have to hit the dusty trail so I can get home and catch some Z's. I did some single arm, 80 pound dumbbell split jerks yesterday, 
and my body, especially my shoulders and calves and abdomen, are absolutely trashed from doing those on a workout. I take a moment at the end of my videos to thank all those who help make these possible. Number one are my Patreon supporters. Number two is that vendor and my followers who graciously donated those HESCO L2 templates for us to destroy so you guys can have information to better make purchases. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range. which is 762 by 39 API BZ or BZ API. It's got a hardened steel core and an incendiary compound in it. This is the Yugo variant. We have a Palmetto State Armory GF3 with a 16 inch barrel. And I shot way too high on that one. I just put a hole right through my clay. That was a very expensive mistake.